All right, Zafu, let's take a look at this uh, essay you have written today. Let's see what you did. Okay, uh, international marketing is a topic. Let's see how you answered this. Some people argue that international marketing could harm the host country. Others, however, believe that it is paramount and assists S them in gaining experience in addition to sharing ideas, language, and culture. All right, careful. You just completely copied this language right from the prompt. Look, ideas, language, and culture, ideas, language, and culture. That's something you absolutely want to avoid. In my opinion, international marketing has enormous benefits in today's globalized world of exchanging innovation and innovation among countries. Okay, this essay discusses both sides of the arguments and will supply the writer's view as well. Okay, fine. To begin with, it is true that exchanging goods and services with other countries may have negative consequences. This means that it may harm the country that is doing the business. For instance, countries from the South cannot mm, cannot compete with the developed nations. As a result, this may affect the employment situation in their countries. Furthermore, this may erode the country's culture. You're missing an apostrophe, and it should be an IES, but it should be a Y apostrophe S, as youths can easily adopt foreign, careful with their spelling, cultures, and languages. All right, this, there's a couple problems with this. Number one, it's underdeveloped. You haven't backed up any of your statements. Um, so, you said that countries from the South cannot compete with developed nations. Why? Explain that to me. I don't understand it. You have to really spell it out for me. Then you say it affects the employment situation. So again, I'm going to ask you, why? How does marketing affect employment? How are they related? So if you're going to go from one point to another, make sure that you've also covered the points that go in between. So for me, it feels like you went from point A to point G, but you missed all of those uh, intermediate stages in order to make your... Um, your opinion clear okay let's see uh and then here too this may erode the country's culture so how why how does this happen so no no support of your arguments here on the other no we don't say on the other side we see on the other hand but for you to say on the other hand you have to have on the one hand here so um there's a, there are other ways to, to show that you're switching over to a different perspective. And, uh, for example, you could have said, that being said, or having said that, okay? Um, or you could have said, despite the disadvantages, all right, all those would have worked. So some people are of the opinion that trading with countries is crucial and can contribute to economic development in addition to words to the other importances no to the important benefits how about yeah to the other benefits such as communicating ideas language and culture there it is again straight from the prompt careful for example if Kenya has a trade relationship with the UK it can acquire spelling technical expertise and technological know-how from them as they have that skill and expertise okay um, moreover it is also no it is also an get rid of an here an event for them to learn the English language who is them who is the them people uh, which enables their citizens to work and live in most parts of the world all right could you said anything else about that how does that happen okay in conclusion although international marketing has s cons of weakening you're missing a syllable here en nations who have an infant economy they could benefit more by receiving technical skills and technological transfer from the developed world i personally believe that countries need to encourage international marketing as they will gain more by doing so all right that was lovely it was really nice there wasn't a lot in terms of errors it was this of course and you're missing an um, article but on the whole, that was fine. Um, your ideas are underdeveloped, You, d especially in this paragraph. Absolutely. I mean, I felt like this was a little better developed. But here, you had all these ideas, and there was no support behind them. Um, grammar is a problem in a number of areas. It's not a huge problem, because I could understand your writing, um, and your meaning got across, but it's still something that I need you to work on. All right? So let's move on to your English and Homestay letter. All right, so check it out. Let's talk about the 
important things here straight away before I actually get into the letter itself. Let's talk about your opening and your closing, your sign off. So, Dr., Mr., and Mrs., um, you can't use that. It has to be dear, fully written out, D E A R. And then Mr. and Mrs. is not something you would say. Um, you could have either said, uh, Dear Sir or Madam. Right, assuming that you don't know the name of the people you were staying with, or uh, assuming that the organization has provided you the name of the people you will be staying with during this program, you could have referred to them by name, but in no case should you use Mr. and Mrs. And like I said, this is absolutely inappropriate. Keep in mind also that you will be given from the paper the beginning of your essay, so it'll tell you the letter that is. It'll say, start your letter, dear, dot, dot, dot. So, this would have been inappropriate. It would have shown that you disregarded the um, instructions. Now, as far as your sign-off is concerned, um, kind regards would have been okay only if you had had the name of the person. So if it was Dear Mr. and Mrs. Jones and you signed off with kind regards, I'd say okay. Um, but when you don't know the name of the person, it should be yours faithfully. All right, so that said, let's move on to the letter itself. First, I would like to thank you for hosting me during my English and Homestay program. I am a 24-year, get rid of this, you're not a boy if you're 24 years old, you're a man, okay? I'm a 24-year-old man from Kenya in Eastern Africa. I am a second-year English literature, there's an E there, student at the University of Kamunda. I would like to know more about the weather conditions, S of Liverpool. I know the UK is one of the coldest countries in the world, but I am keen to hear more about it from you. Furthermore, I am very fond of my country's cuisine, which I am, mm, uh, not which. So, I am planning to bring Kenyan, get rid of the apostrophe S, cooking materials. T do you think I can get such materials from a local shop? Okay, I have booked a ticket for the 24th of March at this time. As my partner wants me to push back my departure, I will let you know if I do so. I cannot wait to meet you to spend a memorable three months with you. Okay, so, um, for me, here's, okay, here's the good stuff and here's the problematic stuff. So, did you introduce yourself? Yeah, you did. Did you ask some questions? Yes, you did. Did you do this? Yes, you did. But all of it was really underdeveloped, and it didn't feel uh, formal. So, um, rather than just go straight into the answer to the bullet, you really should have framed it a little more. You should have provided a little more information. So, um, I would like to introduce myself to you. All right, and then you can say all this stuff. And then, um, prior to my arrival, I would like to inquire, um, or no, prior to my arrival, I would like to ask you a number of questions uh, regarding my stay in the UK. All right, and then you can go into all of this. Um, I have, uh, and then here, I guess that's fine, but that was absolutely missing for me. I mean, you need a little introductory sentence can't just go into the questions, okay? You have to kind of prepare the people for the fact that you're going to be asking them questions. Um, there was some awkwardness in the language, like here, Kenyan cooking materials. So you said that you're planning to bring it, but then you ask if you can buy it. So that was really strange to me. It didn't make sense. Um, also, because it's a formal letter, I want you to avoid using these direct questions like this. Do you think I can get such materials from a local shop? It's not considered terribly formal. So um, what we try to do instead is we try to make our questions as indirect as possible. In other words, um, please let me know if you think I can get such materials from a local shop. All right, so the question is kind of hidden in there, or sometimes we call it embedded. So that would have been a better way to do this. Um, let's see, this is fine, that was fine, okay, so, um, those were some of the errors I found, you need to make it a little more formal, you need to have some introductory statements, don't just go straight into answering the bullets, and, um, some of the awkwardness, all right, so, um, I really would think that you would benefit from the online course, Afu, um, you're at a 
point where I think that online course is probably the best option for you. Uh, so I'd like you to look into it, see if it's an option that works for you. There's a lot of information and a lot of lessons and um, guidance you can get that will help you to improve your writing, okay? Because there are some areas that certainly need to be improved. Um, please look into it as an option, and I hope I get to see more of your work in the near future. Good luck.